Hi guys, welcome to the next video. Um, I have some information I wanted to go ahead and share. Something that the Lord um, brought back to mind again this morning. Um, guys, it, this morning the Lord gave me um, a, a word in the middle of the night. And this is not the first time that I've heard this word. Um, I actually got this word sometime last week or maybe over the weekend that just passed. Um, and I recognized that I received the word, but I was so busy with some other things that was going on um, that I really didn't delve into it. But I know that the Lord has told me this word before, um, and, and, and it's been some time back. But the word is bulwark. Okay, the word is bulwark. I'm, maybe that's I'm pronouncing it right. I'm I'm not sure, but um, this is the word. Okay, and so um, I the last time, um, some time back when he gave me this word, um, I looked it up. I mean, I recognize the word because I have a friend on Facebook, Kathy. She's received this word um, several times, a, a long time ago, and um, and so you know she she had already received this word, and I, so I was familiar with um, seeing the word before. And then, so months back, when he gave me that word, I kind of looked it up. And as a matter of fact, I, I think I even talked about it in a video where I said, you know, guys, I got this word and here's what it means. It means a wall or it means the sides of, a, you know, of, of, a, of the top part of the, of the boat. If you had the deck on the top and then the sides that came up to the rail, that little wall part was called a, a bulwark. And, um, and I really wasn't sure what the Lord was trying to tell me in regards to it. And so, you know, months ago, he, he brought it up. I looked at the definition. I really didn't feel led for anything else, and I kind of just dropped it. And then, um, and then when I heard the word again, either last week or going over the weekend, I was so busy with trying to get the, um, trying to get the videos and everything switched over to MP3 for the voice merge and everything for that other video that I really didn't, um, I didn't really dig into it. I noted it, but I, uh, I, I didn't really dig into it. And so then last night, again, the Lord has come back again, like, you know, bulwark, you know, <laughs> like, so I'm laying in bed and I'm just like thinking, uh, you know, Lord, well, what is it that you're trying to tell me? Uh, in regards to this, what you know, what is it? And um, and so I had some thoughts come to me um, while I was laying in bed, but um, you know, I just I I didn't get out of bed. I still just kind of tossed and turned. It was early, and I thought, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sleep in a little bit later today if I can, because I've not been resting very well. And um, and so then when I did, I got up and I made note of it. Uh, I made note of it in my journal. Uh, later on today, but I made note of it with some friends of mine online, and I basically just uh, sent them a message and said, guys, you know, uh, not for nothing, but I keep getting the word bulwark, and so, you know, can you go to the Lord and see where he's leading you in regards to this and what's going on? This is not the first time I've heard it, um, etc. And so, um, and so I want to read to you um, what our conversation was. And um, I was speaking just to one of my friends at that time who happened to be online. His name is Tim. Uh, and I, 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 if he doesn't mind me, I'd like to convey the conversation that we had because I, I want to show some of the folks that are out there that are, that are not hearing from the Lord or they're saying they're not hearing from the Lord that when you are in conversation with someone else, that that particular scripture does come to pass when there's more, when there's two or more together in his name or for him or speaking of him um, or doing his work or discussing what's going on uh, in regards to his messages in prayer or what have you, he is there in the midst. And, um, and that's why everyone feels such an anointing um, with that song because we were all there with the same heart that we wanted to praise our king and uh, and there was more than two of us there and so that his love and his presence and his spirit and anointing was felt in that video and um, and that was the reason why and so there's truth to that scripture but I want to share uh, the conversation that we had so that you can see the back and forth 
and how the Holy Spirit will help guide um, guide you through. So whether you think you're hearing or not hearing or, or, or what have you, nine times out of ten you are hearing. You're just not understanding that the Lord is guiding you through something. And so that's the reason why I want to share that. So I hope Tim doesn't mind. I'm not, there isn't any personal information in there. So let me just pull it up and um, read just kind of how everything was going along. Because this was going along uh, before work and I didn't have um, uh, I didn't have a whole whole lot of time, but um, but I did have some time. So let me uh, let me just go through, and I basically just put put the note out there that um, guys, this has come up again, and you know uh, please pray to the Lord and see where He's leading you on it. And um, and I had provided the definition, which was the same definition basically that I had. Um, that I had seen the first time where it was, um, you know, about the wall and it was about the sides of the boats and what have you. And, um, and so, um, and so Tim, uh, answered me back and he said in the old Testament somewhere, um, it says that the harvest workers were left there. Um, the harvest workers were left here to bring in the final harvest. We'll have foreigners building, uh, us walls. And, um, and so what he did, um, what he did is he provided some scripture to that. He provided Isaiah 60:10, where it says, Foreigners shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. And then he also provided um, Micah 7:11, that says, A day for the building of your walls. In, uh, in that day, the boundaries shall be far extended. And so um, while he was providing that scripture, um, my mind um, and I felt led to go into Strong's. And so I pulled up, um, I pulled up Strong's um, just to look up the word bulwark. And, um, and when I did, I was really surprised to see how many different definitions for Strong's, I mean in Strong's, there were for bulwark. There was um, there was um, Hebrews 17:85, Hebrews 24:30, Greek 53:13, Hebrews 55:07, Hebrews 24:26, and Hebrews 46:85. And so then I was like, well, what in the world? And so I was just kind of looking through all of those, and it also provided um, some other definitions on that particular search page. But I'm, I was just kind of scanning through to see, you know, what they said before I clicked into it. But there's one that caught my attention. And this is how the Lord works. If something will catch your eye and you're like, oh, let me look at that, you know. And so the one that caught my eye was uh, Hebrews 5507. And that's where the bulwark is being um, described as a buckler. As a buckler. Now, what comes to mind when I hear that word, you know, shield and buckler, right? In, uh, in Psalm 91, shield and buckler. And, um, and so I thought, well, you know, that's pretty interesting. So let me pull up and see um, where that scripture is. I think it's Psalm, uh, I think I have it pulled up here. Psalm 91, uh, 4. Okay, yes. And he shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Now that's a King James Version. Let's look at... Um, um, let me see if I have the, if I have the new... New King James. I probably don't. Let's see what this one is. His, he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. Now that's the New American Standard Bible, but it actually doesn't say buckler. They interchange that word back to the word that I was originally searching for, which was the bulwark. And so um, I thought that was pretty interesting. But coming back to King James Version, he said, His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth 
shall be thy shield and buckler. Now, I thought that was very interesting. I thought that was very interesting. What is the shield and buckler? His truth. Now, we talked about this a little bit back when we were going through um, Ephesians 6 and we were talking about the armor of God. If you guys remember, we did a video on that and I had come across some really good information and I wanted to share some of the symbolism and exactly what that was um, being equated to and, um, and truth was in there. And so, um, and so this, this truth shall be the shield and buckler. Um, and so um, I found that very, very interesting. So now when I was still continuing to talk to, uh, to, talk to Tim in regards to this conversation, um, I had went ahead and shared that link with him and said, take a look at this. There's so many different things in Strong's in regards to, um, to Bulwark. And, um, but I said this that stood out to me, and it was, um, it was regarding um, Shield and Buckler. And so um, he said, does this ring a bell, Isaiah 17? And he's talking about um, the fortresses disappearing uh, from Ephraim. And I said, wait a minute, because now that made me think about the wall and the wall definition of, uh, of the bulwark. And I said, and that brought me right immediately to um, Job and the conversation that Satan had with God in regards to Job. Um, so let me pull up that scripture because this is where my mind went um, immediately from there. Um, that was Job and Job 1. Uh, we're going to read Job 1 six to probably 10, nine or 10, we'll do 10. Okay, so um, so now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? And so Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? And so Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But, oh, verse 11, but now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he and surely he will curse you to your face. Now, this is where my mind went. When Tim said something about the fortresses, my mind went to, oh, the definition of bulwark still included about the wall. And so where my mind went was to the hedge to the hedge that's around us. So not a physical wall, but a spiritual wall, a spiritual wall around us. And so I started saying, well, that reminds me about the hedge, the hedge in here. Let's read this one more time. What does it say about the hedge? This is Satan saying what is around the believers, okay? This is not God saying, this is my promise to you or anything. This is Satan identifying what is around the believers, what God has done to protect the believers, to stave him off. This is what he says. He says, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side. That's where my mind went to. And so I started talking to Tim. Now this is just not, this is just not, oh, the Lord's going to protect you. No. Hear what he's saying. He's saying there's protection around him, his house, and everything all around. It's all around. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. How can I get, Satan saying basically, how can I even have access to him? You've, you've already covered him and protected him all over. Guys, do you remember the video that I just put out not too long ago where we were talking about the earthquaking? 
Remember, I said, if this is the earth and this is the earth, this is not just an earthquake. This is the earth quaking. It's the whole earth moving, you know. And I said at that time, I shared a video of someone that had a vision. Um, and I did share the link of that video. And, I'm, and thank you for whoever found that because I had no idea who it was. And I want to thank you um, uh, personally. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, but I shared the link of the person that had the vision and she went to the window with her camera and she showed what it looked like outside. But she said her house was not moving. Her property was just fine. Her property was protected too. She was fine. Her house was fine. Her property was protected. That's this. That's what's being identified in Job 1. And with everything that I am, I believe that that is what the Lord is trying to tell us with that word, bulwark. And so I'm sitting there and I'm talking with Tim and, and it is resonating with him too. He's saying, yes, I believe this is what it is. And so then I was reminded of the thoughts that I had when I was laying in bed that morning. These are the thoughts that I had when I was laying in bed. This was before I ran across, saw the Strongs, talked with Tim. This was before anything. I was laying in bed, and I got up and I notated it down. This is what it says. My thought was this, that when the stuff starts to happen, you don't need to be running for the hills. You need to run to God. And you need to find a home of a believer and follower in the Lord Jesus Christ. There they will truly know it is good to be under the hand of God. Guys, when I thought back to what I, my thoughts were when I was there laying in bed, I realized my thoughts were not my own. That these were his thoughts coming through into me um, when I thought they were my own, but they're not. They, are the, they were the Lord's. Because it lines up with everything that Tim and I were talking about and how it all kind of inter, intertwined out this morning. Guys, that's how the Lord works sometimes. Sometimes you can't hear him. Sometimes it's not going to be an audible voice. Sometimes you're not going to hear him in thought. Sometimes you're not going to pick him up here in your spirit or you're not going to feel him. You know, he's going to be talking to you through song. He's going to be talking you to you through other people. He's going to be talking you uh, to you through a billboard or the newspaper or something. He's going to come out and reach and talk to you in ways that you just stop, slow down, and look and understand that he's God and he can he can reach out to you in any way available in any way available. Now, um, speaking about talking in song. The Lord just, he just, the other day, what day was it? Do I have it noted down? Um, no, it must have been Thursday. I think it was Thursday. I better note that down. Um, he gave me a, I woke up, I had a song in my mind. Um, oh gosh, what was the name of that song? Um, Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, here it is. Here's the name of it. It's Love is in the Air, and it's back like from the 70s. Um, and I, I can't put a clip of the song on here because then they'll block my video <laughs> and say it's a copyright issue. But I, I, I don't want to do that. But I can sing. What I heard in my mind was this. I heard, love is in the air. Da -na 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 -na. Love is in the air. That song. And so um, I thought, you know, so I was talking to my friend Petra that morning. I was driving into work and I was like, you know, the, I have this song in my mind. And I said, do you know this song? And she's like, oh, yeah, I remember that song. And so, you know, I had to look up the lyrics. I had no idea. Guys, take a look at the lyrics on it. I will put a link to that song um, along with the, with, the, uh, with the lyrics on it. Facebook has already been given this information because I was able to to go and put it on there um, that same day. But um, the Lord is telling us, you know, guys, it's time. It's time. And um, and we need to, we just need to be ready. But not only that, the bulwark, we need to trust him. We need to know, 
what he has told us in the path in the past we can rely upon it's truth his words have been truth to us go back he's told us go back and look at what i told you go back and look at what i told you okay and even in the message that he just gave me this morning which i'm going to share with you he says the same thing it's the same thing there's strength there he's saying and there's truth there okay so no in job 1 you know it's being described what our what our protection is and it's there guys we may not be able to see it it's supernatural but it's there okay and so um let me see what else i have here i want to make sure that i'm sharing everything with you okay that was the strong's bulwark uh psalm 91 job okay um this deals with the message um so the only other thing, um, the only other thing that I want to remind you before I get into the message, um, the only other thing that I want to remind you is Amos 3.7. Guys, you know, I know a lot of you might have some fear coming in, but read Amos 3.7. You know, the Lord will do nothing without first telling his prophets. And so um, we're going to be hearing some things through the Spirit, um, through the Spirit. Okay, so let me just go ahead and go over and share the message that I received uh, this morning with you all. Um, it, is a, um, it is a very important message. It's talking about um, our infilling. So let me read this to you. I received this this morning, August 25th, 2017, while I was in prayer. Um, and this is um, part of the message. Part of it was for me. Um, and part of it was um, for everyone. So here's what is to be shared corporately. My child, listen, for it shall not be long now till the bell tolls and the process and starts the process of refinement and manifestation of my presence within those whom I have selected to receive it. Your ways upon the earth will become my ways, my children, and you shall see supernaturally how things can and will be affected by that power within. You can know all things, for it will be given unto you, shown to you in that day. When you need it, it will arise. When you call for it, it shall appear. When you praise, I shall manifest myself unto you. So now, guys, I had to stop right there because I thought, well, Lord, you know, are you not talking about our infilling here? Are you not already manifested at that time? I was a little bit confused. And so I, I stopped and I questioned this and I asked him to please come back and say that again. And so what he said, what he said was um, the first time he said it, when you praise I shall manifest myself unto you. And I stopped him and I asked him to come back and say it again. And he said this, when you praise, I shall be there in full force and capacity. My child, listen, for it is not long now that the bell tolls. So that's twice he's saying something about the bell tolling. He's not saying the trumpet blast. He's not saying I'm calling your name. He's not saying that. He's saying the bell tolls. And so there's something about that that we need to know and understand because that's new language um, and that's not something that he has been saying. That's, that's something different now. And so we need to find out what that's all about. But interesting that he came back when I asked him and questioned him about him manifesting himself unto us. He came back and he just expanded that answer. He said... Um, I shall be there in full force and capacity. So guys, the only thing I can think of on that part in regard, and I and I may be off base, but my mind went to the Mount of Transfiguration where Jesus was shining and full of glory on top of the mount. But when he was coming down that mountain with those, those three disciples that were with him, what is it that he told them? He said, tell no one of what you what you saw at this time, you know, to do it later. And so um, and so but he wasn't shining at that point. So 
there's where my thought went. So here all this time, I'm thinking to myself, you know, well, we're going to be full of glory and going throughout the earth and, you know, doing our part of the harvest. He said, I'm going to send you to the nations. You know, you're going to go and you're going to minister to people. You're going to, you're going to, you know, be able to heal and there's going to be lots of things going on. But guys, I'm here to tell you, I, I think in my mind, I thought we were just going to be completely changed. But I'm, I'm not real sure that that is the case. I think it's going to be an off and on thing. Uh, according to what I'm, what I was given this morning, uh, which is complete and different news to me, and and I don't believe I've heard that from anybody else, and so um and so I need to submit that for your discernment. Please go to the Lord in regards to that. Um, uh, something's up with that. So um you know it, it are, I know that when Jesus um had come and talked with some of those folks on the road, people didn't recognize him. And Mary Magdalene, who saw him first um, when he had uh, was had come out of the tomb, um, and she went and you know someone had approached her. She thought it was the gardener. She didn't recognize him first either. And then when Jesus um, had actually come to um, approach doubting Thomas, um, he was he looked like Jesus at that time. So I'm wondering, you know, is that something that we are going to um, have the ability to do? To conceal who we are um, to to certain people, or to show who we are to certain people. Will it be the same in regards to the glory? Um, will we be able to uh, manifest it when when it's needed, but not have it at certain times? Um, you know, guys, I don't know, but that's what it seems like it is saying in this message, and so I need to submit that um, for your discernment. Okay, so let me finish the message. It says, watch for my hand upon your life and those who are willing to forego the way. Now, I thought, well, what does that mean? Forego means to, to quit, to not. So, um, so he's saying, watch for my hand upon your life, but watch for those that are not willing to go all the way. Uh, be careful. Be aware. Um, so I guess we're still going to have some um, that, that, that maybe may lose their focus um, or their strength in their walk. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know really what he's saying here. Um, but I'm going to ask that you pray for those that are walking forth, that have been given the words and the messages that this is what their purpose is going to be in the Lord. Um, this is what they're, uh, when they're called into service, this is what they're going to be called into. This particular task, I'm going to ask please that you pray for those people because um, and for, for, for an infilling of oil, for an infilling of strength, and, um, and peace and, and love and joy within their lives so that they continue to move forth uh, in him. Um, let me finish. You, you are one among many who will be seen upon the earth projecting and professing my great love. Uh, hold fast my loves for it is time uh, and it is quickly approaching the day of manifestation. That's what he's calling it. The day of manifestation. Uh, that is the manifestation of his presence. Um, so hold on to all that I have told you in the past, for it is strength unto you. My ways upon the world shall be seen among many. Um, shalom. And that was the end of the message. So now, guys, um, I know we kind of detailed some things out here, but i got to come back to that bell tolls thing. You know, I thought... That is so strange. That just doesn't, you know, that doesn't make sense. And so when I started to look it up, you know, it came up with uh, Ernest Hemingway, for whom the bell tolls. And I thought, you know, no, that's not it. That, you know, the Lord is not leading me to Hemingway. You know, I didn't think he was. But even so, I did look to see exactly what that novel was about. And it was about, it was about war. It was about war. Um, and I thought, well, all right, well, you know, maybe. Uh, maybe that's it, um, but something still wasn't uh, wasn't shining. Now I found something else that I would like to um, talk with you all about, and let me open it up here and see if I can uh, find it. Um, yes, okay. This is an article that I came across, um, and I'll provide the link for you guys. 
Um, and it's a pretty interesting article. It's in regards to the bells. And I'm trying to open it up a little bit bigger on this side. Uh, I don't know if I can. Let me move my camera thing over and see if I can open it up bigger this way. Whoops. Um, but it's got a lot of interesting uh, information in it. It says bells, supernatural enchantment and biblical uh, perspective. Now, um, the one thing here, here's the, here's the part of the article I wanted to read bells in the Bible. And it said, so let's begin um, with the consideration of what the Bible reveals about bells, uh, being mindful that whatever is genuine, the devil will hijack in his counterfeit schemes. And so we know, you know, we know um, that happens. So there's very little about bells in the Bible, but what there is reveals just how special the object is. Uh, bells are, are not presented in any common or casual use. Okay, and so we have some scripture here, and let me see if I can make this bigger. Um, we have some scripture here where it is um, speaking of uh, Exodus 28, 33 through 38. And it says, and you shall make on its hem pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet material all around its on its hem and bells of gold between them all around a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate all around on the hem of the robe. And it shall be on Aaron when he ministers and its tinkling shall be heard when he enters and leaves the holy place before the Lord so that he will not die. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that started like, you know, getting me very, very excited because we know the Lord's been talking about the high priesthood. We know he's been talking about Melchizedek. Um, and we and we know that we are going to be kings and priests, right? And so um, and so it continues on. Um, uh, so he he had to wear these on his robe uh, going into the holy place so that he would not die. You shall also make a plate of gold. Okay, so he's talking about um, some more here about consecration. Okay, so um, the next context with bells is in Exodus 39 which nearly repeats the Exodus 28 that I just um, read out to you. The last one features a different Hebrew word, um, uh, metsila, a bell fastened in a way of ornament to horses and camels. And so you had bells on that. Um, so Zechariah 14, 20 through 21 also had some bells. And it was in that day that there shall be the bells uh, of the horses, it, let me start that over. In that day, there shall be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and they that sacrifice shall come and take them and seethe therein. And in that day, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So that was Jack, Zechariah 14. Um, and so a very important 35th, 35th verse in Exodus 20, 28 is rendered um, literally in the YLT version. Um, and it says, And it hath been on Aaron to minister in, and its sound had been heard in his coming into the sanctuary before Jehovah and in his going out and he doth, excuse me, not die. So again, its sound has been heard in his coming into the sanctuary before Jehovah and is going out so that he would not die. So the sound Aaron made with the bell and the pomegranate fringe is connected with entering into and leaving the Lord's presence in the most high place and not dying. 
This is no small matter. These bells are functioning to facilitate passage between the natural and supernatural realms. Even being involved in accessing the presence of the Most High God. Now guys, we've talked about this. We said there's going to be open heavens. We said that there's going to be certain ones selected to be able to go back and forth, back and forth. And they're going to go and get the information directly from God. And they're going to come down and they're going to make sure that stuff is being handled here. And so those back and forth, that's what he's talking about here. And then also to, to have the infilling, right? To have the infilling of God. Um, that's the holy, that's, that's the, that's the holiness. And so are the bells, is there, is there something that's got to be done? He said, it's not long before the bell tolls. Let's read what this word says again, because I'm just beside myself with what I found today. It says, my child, okay, my child, listen, it shall not be long now till the bell tolls. He said it twice. Guys, any time the Lord says anything twice, it's important. Take special note of it. And so that's what I did. And when I looked all of this up in regards to the bells, it's not common use. It's not everyday use. It's used by the Most High Priest going in front of the presence of the Most High God. And it was so that he would not die. And it was so that his presence would be known when he came in and when he left. Guys, let me continue reading some of this article. This is just fascinating. The high priest was the only person permitted to enter into the most holy place. And that was only usually around one time a year, uh, around Yom Kippur um, in, in, in the... Jewish tradition. Okay. The high priest was the only one. Appearing in any other condition at any other time or attempted access by any other person in any other condition at any other time would assure death in that place. Now we read about that. We read that, you know, uh, someone went in to fill the oil or something like that. I can't recall the specific uh, story in the Bible, but we know that there was someone struck dead, right? Um, there's more required beyond just the sound made by the bell and pomegranate fringe for the high priest, priest to remain alive and not die, like his having washed in the bronze labor made by uh, in the bronze labor, but the sound of the fringe was among the required elements that made him holy unto the Lord. His flesh was protected then, immune to, or perhaps most correctly, untouched by the consuming fire of the presence of the most holy God. I am beside myself. The sound made by the bells is somewhat related to the sound of the shofar that also marks Yom Kippur. In popular Judaism, there's a special focus on Yom Kippur on the gates of heaven, which is swing closed at the end of the day. The gates of heaven obviously control access to heaven. The shofar is as a voice from heaven that crosses the divide. But the bell provides for the access. Guys, I, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know what to tell you. I am beside myself in regards to um, what the Lord has said in that message. I will provide the message. I will provide the article. I encourage you, please, to seek the Lord on this. And I submit all of this for your discernment. But guys, I'm here to tell you, uh, I don't know if the Lord has said that to anybody else, but if they have, please let 
the message that I received today be your confirmation. And um, but the, the, know and understand that when I went through and looked at some of these scriptures, there there isn't anywhere else that I could find because I was like, Lord, you know, is there bells in the Bible? That's what I went searching for in Bible Gateway. I was looking for. You know, where does it say bell tolls in the Bible? Tell me what, what that's all about. And when I did the Google search too, that's where I came across that. And when I came across that, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. You, you just, guys, there is no coincidence. There is no coincidence. But guys, I'm here to tell you, he's, he is, this is where we're at. He's brought us along this path. If you look back at all of the messages and all of the videos, not just me, but some of the other messengers have already been receiving. Guys, you can see the path that the Lord has been taking us down. And he has He has told us, clear out your heart. He has told us, cleanse it. He, you know, lay it down. Get stuff out of your life. He's told us, I cannot feel what's already been, what's already full. That stuff that's in you that you're carrying around that is not of him is going to be shaken. You know, get rid of that stuff. Don't put, don't put your thought and your whole life into it. Have trust in what he has told you. It's his words. It's what he has told you. It's how he has led you. That's going to be your shield and buckler. Also, the words that are in scripture, Psalm 91, you know, that is going to be your shield and buckler. You know, his words, the sword of the spirit, the truth that's going to be coming out. You know, guys, we have to rely upon those things, not the things that we have materially in this world. He knows we have need of a house while we're here. But the houses of believers, their property, themselves, their property, and their and 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 what they have going around is going it's there's a hedge all around us. It's protected supernaturally by the hand of God. We saw in that video by that wonderful lady who, who shared her vision. Thank God she did. Where she had that thing in front of the... And she was showing the earth quaking outside of her home. But nothing bothered within her home. Guys, I'm here to tell you. The Lord God has provided for his children. He has provided for his children. And because we don't know all of the things that are getting ready to come about, sometimes some people will have a little bit of fear instill into them. But I'm here to tell you guys, trust in your Father. Trust in the Lord. He has it all under control. And not once is He going to leave your side. Not once is He going to... Not once is he going to forsake you. Not once. If there's anything that I can tell you right now, if there's anything I can convey to you right now, trust your God because he has it all under control. There isn't not one inkling. There's not one crumb on his plan that he has not taken a look at and made sure it is for your best good, for my best good, for all of us, guys, for all of us. Yes, we have a job to do. Yes, there's going to be some scary stuff that's going to be coming about. But let me tell you, it's not going to come near you. It's not going to come near you. If you are walking and abiding and being a true follower, wholeheartedly following and, and loving the Lord your God, Jesus, Yeshua, then you are protected. You are under his wing and you are hidden within him. Please hear me when I tell you that. Please hear me when I tell you that. Please hear me when I tell you that. He is our Father. And He is not going to let anything happen to you. And He's going to tell you when it's coming. He's going to tell you when it's coming. So guys, um, I submit all of that stuff to you. I'm sorry. I just, you know, somebody needed to hear that. Somebody needed to hear that. I pray you heard it with your heart. I pray you heard it with your heart. Guys, God bless you. I love you. I, I hope to be talking to you soon. I'll see you very, very soon.